There's an ascension symptom that so many people talk about. So many of you light workers and star seeds and spiritual warriors have spoken about, and it's your memory. It's short-term memory loss. So it's that feeling of walking into the kitchen and very confidently, if you're anything like me, opening the drawer and then going, oh, what am I doing? And then calling, in my case, my son and going, oh, what did I want to say now? And then whatever, you know, phoning a friend and going, oh, what did I want to say? short term memory loss can you relate i know that you can if you're a light worker this is very much par for the course this is very much what we've grown accustomed to but what the heck is going on really will we ever get our memory back is it going to get worse is it going to get better and what's causing it in the first place and should we be worried okay there's a couple of reasons well there's two from an energetic perspective there's two main reasons why your short-term memory is misfiring one of them is for a very nefarious reason and when i explain it to you you're going to understand why when people talk about ascension symptoms i often backtrack a little bit because not everything is a legitimate ascension symptom okay let's qualify what is an ascension symptom what is that it's the resistance between an incoming energy and your physical body so the more that you are in trust, the easier it is to work with that incoming energy. The more you are in the lack of trust, which is what? If you are not trusting life, you are then going to control life. That's the ego's ploy. It doesn't make you bad and it doesn't make you wrong. It makes you very, very human. So please be gentle, loving and compassionate if you notice this within yourself. Oh, wow, I'm not in trust. Okay, then the only other place to be, we live in duality. So it takes a lot of guesswork out of where we're at. If you're not here, you're there. If you're not there, you're here. The incoming energies. So this is the stuff that's new, the stuff that your body bumps into. And then instead of absorbing and embodying and allowing the incoming energy to do what it's designed to do, which is to discharge the stories the past, the addictions, the densities, the blockages, everything that we've become attached to, instead of allowing for that to happen with ease, which is why some people say, I don't get ascension symptoms, there are those people that try to control. So now they are experiencing the incoming energy and at a very deep level. This isn't happening at the level of the conscious mind. This is happening at the level of unconsciousness. They're putting up a resistance to this incoming energy. And it's that resistance that causes what we call ascension symptoms. But not everything is an ascension symptom. I was dizzy for years. For years. I was, so, I was so dizzy. And I would tell people about it and they would say, don't worry about it. It's just an ascension symptom. No, it was actually just diabetes, you guys. I was just really ill. And instead of recognizing that something was wrong, I was in a kind of a, a mind-numbed state. When I did find out, find out that I had diabetes way down the line, by the way, my diabetes is 100% cured. Thank you to my amazing diet. But that's why not everything is an ascension symptom. And, you know, don't ask in the comment section. Guys, there's a lot of people that go, my ears are ringing. Is this an ascension symptom? It could be. But maybe you've got earache. I'm not looking at you. I don't know. And it's not a blanket statement that it's the same thing for everybody. It can't be. So be more responsible with what you feel and don't try looking for blanket statements. And very important, spiritual community, this is really important. If you feel a certain thing, okay, maybe for example, you're very thirsty on one day, or maybe you're buzzy, you know, like energetically, you can get buzzy. Uh, maybe you're feeling topsy-turvy. Maybe you're feeling particularly forgetful. I see this daily basis in the comment section. People say, I'm feeling X, Y, Z. Is anyone else feeling this too? Who cares if the whole world is feeling it? Is that going to validate you now? Is that going to say, oh, so now, now I'm okay because everybody else is feeling it. Please learn to feel what you feel. Please learn nobody else needs to feel this for it to be valid to you. Maybe everyone else is feeling it. Maybe no one else is feeling it. That should be entirely irrelevant. Okay, rent out of the way. Thank you. Now let's get going. Two reasons as to the memory loss. Reason number one 
energetic bombardment of the nefarious kind. Our atmosphere, the air that we breathe in, is absolutely bombarded with a very unnatural amount of electromagnetic frequencies. They might be from cell phone towers and they might be from your router and your modem and your microwave oven and just the general electricity that you're surrounded by. What we're living in is a very unnatural bombardment of frequency and they're very unnatural frequencies and they're meant, they're designed to scramble your energy. And when they do, you're put in fight flight. That's what happens. You go into fight flight and you're not going to use your energy for the normal things like rest and recuperation and allowing your short-term memory to kick in. Your short-term memory is going to hit the floor. It's going to totally be overlooked because you're now in survival mode because of this influx of very unnatural energy. And you see why it's been put there. It's been put there because the nefarious ones who are the archons, you can watch a video on my channel to find out more about them. You can watch a playlist on my channel to find out more about the false matrix and its establishment. These nefarious ones, they wanted to offset what they knew would happen. They knew these divine frequencies would come in, but they wanted to flood humanity with non-divine frequencies first. So that's why we have this scrambling effect. And that's what's caused the short-term memory loss. But, oh light worker loves, you are the ultimate transformers. You are alchemists. At your very nature, what you are is an alchemist. And you know what an alchemist is designed to do? To transform everything. I just realized I was moving around. Sorry, you guys. There's my microphone. I hope that it didn't make any rustling, hustling, bustling. Sorry if it did. That's very annoying. I'll try not to move. So the, where was I? Oh God, sorry, you guys. I lost my train of thought now. Ah, I'll figure it out way too late. So let me just pick up from where I think I was. The nefarious ones wanted to offset the divine light that was coming in. That occurred and we elevated because of it. The darkness always catalyzes the light. That's the nature of darkness. Darkness will always lift you higher if, if, big if, if you let it. If you let yourself grow through hardship, grow through discomfort, that's what darkness is. Darkness is all the density and the trauma and the fear and the survival mode stuff and the fight flight stuff. It's the opposite of light and light is ease and light is love and light is harmony and light is authenticity and light is lightness as in ease of being. As that comes in, it's because of of the darkness that we face. So in other words, because we faced all of this scrambling, it forces us to do something that we wouldn't have done. And that is to find the only one single place where your memory, your short-term memory did work. Do you know where your short-term memory does work? In the now. It's the only place that your short-term memory works 100% in the now. But the now is not the present. Don't confuse the two. English is such a, and, and just language in general, is very much designed to confuse and trick and distort and demean our energetic intention. So let's highlight the difference between the now and the present. The present is the time. So look at your time, whatever it is. Okay, that's the present. The now is an energy field. The now is a higher dimensional experience of reality. How do you access that? How do you access the now? Now, there's actually a beautiful course on my website called Forever Starts Now. So if you want to go and deep dive into this and get really brushed up on how to access the now, I can take you much deeper in that online course. So it's at kerryk.com in the online shop. But let me give you a little brief synopsis of where you find the now. You find the now when you drop all of the thoughts and all of the distractions of the external world and you get into and very connected to the internal world where presence, connection and stillness lie. Presence, connection and stillness. Connection to the higher energy field of you. Stillness, being not physically sitting still, 
you can be busy and in stillness. Stillness is that immovable, beautiful harmony that runs through you no matter what's taking place. And presence. Presence is, oh, this is divine. Presence is literally divinity. To be presence as presence itself. Presence is divinity. When you can access these states of being, you're in the now. And the now is going to give you access to omnipotent wisdom. And you feel very potentized in the now. You feel so depotentized and so diluted when you're not in the now. When you're in the future and when you're in the past, you are drained. Drained. A lot of people say to me, oh God, there's the chorus of my dogs barking. A lot of people say to me, I don't know why I'm so tired. I know. I know why you're so tired. Because as a species, we haven't learned to access the now. And we need to. Otherwise, we're living in this dilution of energy and your short-term memory is going to be on the fritz. So do you regain your memory? Actually, you do more than regain your memory. You begin to operate from a higher mind, a higher bandwidth and a higher consciousness, almost overriding that which we once called the short-term memory. So your higher consciousness has a very interesting thing. It has a short-term memory that is not bound to the past. Listen up. A short-term memory that's not bound to time. Hmm? Yeah. When you really learn to immerse in the now, which every single one of you can do, I don't want to make it sound like it's very mysterious, out of reach place. It's honestly not. It just takes practice to get in. And I really would love you to practice. And I've given you guys all the teachings and the tools to practice. But let me give you another one. This one is so crazy simple. Watch. Just a breath. Just a breath. But in that breath, I drop my energy down into my heart. So I stabilized and I centered myself right into the middle of my chest. And that gives me this gorgeous sense of stability. And now I'm very inside my inner world as opposed to floundering, distracted and dispersed in the external world. Because in the external world, you're very scattered. When you're here, very potentized and this is the now it is a higher state of consciousness so when you enter in here you can begin to access your immediate past which is what your short-term memory was designed to offer you access to your short-term past but also to your short-term future i know this is the gorgeous beauty Everything that was thrown at humanity with the intention to deliver darkness upon them, with the intention to derail them, will land up causing humanity to reach higher heights. It will land up making you go further, faster, quicker because of all of that nefarious intention. A lot of you have done this without even knowing that you were meant to. A lot of you have done this without even understanding the mechanics of why your short-term memory is kicking in every now and then. Some people just very intermittently dip their toe in the now every now and then. And that's cool. Just that little dipping of the toe, so to speak, in the now every now and then is going to give you a little bit of a boost to that short-term memory. Yes, I know. You guys can tell me in the comments. There's probably going to be supplements that would be very important for you to take and things like that. But you know what? At an energetic level, you can take every perfect thing that you're meant to, but absorb none of it. It's not about what you put in. It's about what you integrate and what you absorb. And honestly, the realignment that works is the energetic realignment because you are an energetic being. So your short-term memory, yes, it's going to come back online. You light workers, you amazing alchemists, you are in the process of transforming the reality that was meant to leave you a babbling, drooling idiot. And I say that knowing that some of you are going to go, Kerry, look at society. Society are kind of babbling, drooling, you know what? Well, some of them can be, okay? Some of them can be because they're under the influence of a spell. They're under the influence of a program of the false matrix and they cannot find their way out of it right now. It's like they're zombified or hypnotized. And well, when I say it's like they are, that's what the 
programs of the false matrix were designed to do to render humanity absolutely depotentized yet there were light workers among us who found their way kind of like finding a slipstream into higher consciousness found their way into the now and because one did it two did it three did it ten did it a thousand did it and so now it leaks into the collective watch this video next because this is going to explain a little bit more to you about the false matrix that's where we've been hanging out that's why we've had all of the faced all of these things and it's what we are in the process of transcending from my heart all the way into yours so much love